Let's -a go. Here we are. Twinkle Project concert number one. Well, listen to my song, yo, Cheryl. Which is Masara's catchphrase, by the way, because this is all we can say. So, Cheryl's out of control. It's super good. Looks like she's making up for lost time because of all the time she's been recovering. And you know what? Renka's doing alright too. She goes. And um There Grace is saying it little queen and she's calling Renka. And she's loving it. The more the little queen sings, the more they will be drawn to come here. And that will open the door to the future. Brilliant. So let the super dimensional Cinderella call forth the flames of battle. And now they say that their new song, Lion, is not going to be performed anywhere except for on the Twinkle Project tour. So hold on to your butts. So, these dudes all wish they were at the concert, but unfortunately their R&R &R is being stent on guard duty. So they're just like, oh, jeez. Can't believe you guys get to hang out with Ranker and Cheryl all the time. Ugh. Like, Osma's even made peace with uh, Ranker becoming a singer. And that makes it easier for him to go off and take everybody else on the next assignment, because he ain't worried about her. Why is there a concert? Because it's Macross! They've got Cheryl uh, Nome, the Galactic Fairy, and Ranka Lee, the Super Dimensional Cinderella! So entertaining the troops, kind of? No, no, this music's powerful in Macross. The cult, like, it's music literally stops humanity from becoming extinct. It's fucking wild. But apparently, I'll, like, I'll get into it when we're done with this bullshit. But the assignment's checking out uh, the last unexplored dark zone in the solar system. It's far away from all the shipping lanes and all that jazz, but, you know. A special dark zone! Because every time anybody else has gone to look at it, they've gone missing. That's not good. Um, but space time in the area is real... Fucking high level bards. Real high level bards. One of them was just a regular bard. Like, an actual regular bard. No magic or nothing. And then they gradually got more and more magic. Um, but yeah, space FaceTime's got all fucky. And uh, that might be connected to how the Frontier Fleet got here, so... It's a little close. Uh, the so-called Dimensional Warp Zone is space's equivalent to the surface's Dark Continent. And it should make for some adventures, at least. Yeah, music moves the heart of man. Exactly. Exactly. Esther's ready to go. And uh, maybe fight some dimensional beasts. And she's got uh, her catchphrase is all ready to go. Um, and we're going to go into the Bermuda Triangular space, I guess. He's a DM buster. There's the hell has given it all, taking it to the max, yeah. So here, Connie's like, wow, that's a new catchphrase. She's like, yeah, I'm working on it. Yeah, Takaru's got a bad feeling about this, though, unfortunately. This is Scenario 7 Twisted Dimension. Quarter has made it to the area. Dimensional wooblies, so weird. 
Bobby wishing they could see the cut. Yeah, Monica's like, damn. Monica uh, loves Jeffrey, by the way, she's got a thing. Just uh, fuck that, Dad. Anyway. Takaru's got a bad feeling about it, as he says, because he says that a lot. And then you shouldn't show up. It sucks. And Gel's here, and so's Varen. Uh, pretty, yeah, and uh, Clan's like, wait, that Gishin lady, isn't she dead? Pretty sure they're dead. Pretty sure both of them are dead. And they're like, yes, but we were raised by the powers of darkness. And Takaru's like, yeah, that's bullshit. I don't, I don't believe it. But what is, like, no matter how they're back or what's going on, we do have to beat them up. So they say they're going to head for the frontier fleet, and it's build up of energy. And you're like, nah, just, nah, just get fucked, dudes. Hi, how are you doing? But yeah, in Macross, the first, the original Macross, um, Earth, like, humanity was, was going extinct because there were a warrior race who were murdering the shit out of us constantly. Um, but then it turned out that they didn't have any culture and shit. So they didn't have music or art or know what babies were because they were all clones and men and women were kept separately. So, um, when a lady sang, they all lost their fucking minds. And it's uh, good as hell because um, there's a bit where the main character and the lady likes they kiss, and they're like, "What are you doing?" And like, "We're kissing. This is how we show we love each other." And a giant man is like, "What the fuck is this?" And they also don't believe the baby's real. They're like, it's just some sort of doll. And then it moves and they're like, fuck! A tiny person that will become big? This is bullshit. Nah, we knew well, we knew Emperor Zul was gonna come back. Because it like it, when we beat him up last game, he just goes, This is just one cell, and I have infinite across the cosmos. Wow, well, I'll be back! And then Mars was, and then everyone was like, ah oh, fuck. But because it's God Mars and they wanted to save money on everything, the reason that he keeps coming back is because then they didn't have to hire anybody else <laughs> to voice act or design any new characters. Dear culture. Eat this, Gary, you big piece of shit. You, yeah, you and Gary, they will show you the power of darkness. Yeah, whatever, Aquarian is the, the sun. Get fucked. みんなの力を変えるぞ。私は足元が見えていなかった。あ、読み落としの。でも、こいつめ。こいつめ。で、but yeah, like, the original Matt Cross, Lady just sang and that blew the dude's mind. And then... In the next Matt Cross, they sort of, like, weaponized sound. And came up with some science behind it. And then... Matt Cross Frontier is, like, singing can fucking teleport you and shit, it's crazy. And then in Delta, wow, nano machines. Just, whoa, <laughs> nano machines. <laughs> Buren. But yeah, um. Uh oh, dimensional bullshit. Here they come. It's a fold, it's the Vajra. Brilliant, great. Skull 3. What's going on? Yeah, they just fold waved in. It sucks. And the fact they folded in means there must be a nest around here somewhere. And then... It's fucking Baldios, baby. What the heck are we doing here, Marion? Why'd you jump us here? I don't know, we just fucking showed up, alright? Just did a friggin' subspace jump and now we're here. But... 
he's like, okay, crushers, SMS, Gishin. Right, we got it. Let's fight the bugs and the aliens. Nailed it. Oliver right there, let's uh, get him. Pull the awesome for all the power. Howdy, Tyson, how you doing? Double big, but okay, can't aim anyway, never mind. So when the bards have access to the gates files? I keep telling you, they're powerful. Marin, did you mess up all the jump? But listen, we got better shit to worry about now. What, Marin? You're meant to. Marin did a rare miss? Listen, buddy, I'm trying my best. You gotta take the front there. No problem, we got you, Marin. But yeah, you'll meet Basara this game, and Basara is really good. Because he sings a lot, and he yells listen to my song. And there's a lady, and there's a lady who loves him. But he's basically a fucking alien, so. He's above such mere concerns as loving somebody and kissing them. Fucking bizarre. And then there's Gamlin, who's such a naughty, rowdy, horned up dude that he thinks lewd thoughts, such as holding her hand and hugging her. Because he's a poor little alien man. Gamlin's really good. I love that dude. Now, I gotta get deep up in here because the bugs are gonna fight the other dudes and I don't want them stealing my box. Not that it really matters because we're not keeping this safe, but you know. He's an alien sex fest? <laughs> if only! <laughs> Macross 7 also has like the best resolution to a love triangle in anything where the last episode the girl's like, Who am I gonna choose? Basara, the man who sort of mostly ignores me, but I really love him. Or Gamlin, who's really nice, but I mean, he's not that cool. Who am I gonna pick? And she just goes, it, You know what? I'm 17. I've got years to go. I can just pick whenever I want. i got loads of time. And that's it, it's just how it ends. Holding hands, we actually make little doll people. That's what's so fucked up. Like, so, like he makes a face, and they're like, "You're thinking dirty thoughts about Mylene." And he's like, oh, "How could you tell?" And he was just actually, literally thinking of holding her hand. He's like, "Because oh, that's the filthiest shit you can think of." Because he's incredible. He's a Gavin kick. He does, like, kick a robot as well. Like, in, like, he doesn't even become big man mode, he's just tiny man, he just gets on a surfboard and drop kicks a robot and yells, Gamlin kick! And he's also voiced by Dio, he's good. I can't love Gamlin. As a sniper, I've got an eye for that. Uh, these dudes are from Macross Frontier, and they've all got their uh, super packs, and the Osmer's got his um, armor pack on, so he's a big fat boy. Like, um, all Macrosses have had, like, super packs and armor packs, but their one is, like, super chunks of them. I like it a lot. It's gonna go weird for a bit. Like, look at them. Like, look at that chunky plane, just covered in shit. He's got, like, loads of stuff extra on him that he shouldn't have. 
Um, like, you shouldn't have the sniper rifle, which is the big Christmas tree gun. And he shouldn't have the big missiles on the end of his wings, like someone's just gonna be going all the way, baby. Hi, how you doing? Is it bad you've only seen Macro Zero all the way through? No. Like, they're all a lot of episodes to sit through. Um, Macro 7, as much as I love it, you could probably cut, like, first 20 episodes, like you could cut a lot of them out. Because while Vasara is like a very good um, like dude and his character is good, because his character is good it does make him very frustrating. Bible comes out, which I think actually comes out today or tomorrow, Japan time. So that'll hopefully get all the secrets and shit revealed. Stop blowing up bugs. Don't give it a shit though. <gasps> they blow up a fucking bug. Uh oh. More incoming. Dimensional beast. Weird new ones. With weird fucking shit on their head. yelling stupid shit again. But these two dudes just don't seem to be attacking anybody, they're just sitting each other, looking after each other. So that's weird, we've got to beat them up. The SR point is blow up both of them at the same time, either with support attacks by getting the one that defends and then the main one, or a map attack. I haven't done more of the playthroughs yet, so we waiting for the Proofic Bible. Yeah, Mars. So, these guys are yelling and they're like, yeah, we're gonna disrupt the concert, see you later, shithead. And Mars is like, man, I don't like that at all. Yeah, like, the mission was Cheryl's concert. What the fuck's up with that? Why do they hate music? Because it's the power of life, dude. I fucking hate Japanese. The fact that both of them said the same thing, but like Apollo and Connor, which is the the ruder, rougher way, and Sirius was Koitsume, which is just you. But speaking down to someone in a rude way, and then also adding May to be extra rude. And it's just like, yeah, that's... I can't believe both those dudes have got... They said the same shit, but in different ways that... Uh, explain their characters, because the language is silly. That's alright, I said Japanese is silly. Wild. Yeah, refined, rude, and crude, exactly. It's like the thing where um, children are taught boku, like bokuwa and bokurano, as um, like me, I, and our, like boku. Um, but it's like it's a boys one. Boys say boku, but they teach it to all children first because it's easy. And then they move on to the more complicated stuff, and then that means that um, women who are tomboys can say Boku. Um, because they're being 
boy. But it also is a thing that you can have a character or person say if they want to appear like childlike, if they want to appear immature. They can also say Boku if they're a girl. Pinpoint barrier, too strong. So, all the old homeboys out there, be careful when you use Boku when you're speaking Japanese. Make sure everybody knows you're a tomboy and not a drooling idiot. Make sure they they got the right aspect. Well, if you're both, then, I mean, you got one word that's going to get it, and you're a very deep and layered and nuanced character. And person. So, you got it covered. Bow beam. Launch! Boing. Remember when Japan stole an entire alphabet from China just so they could make puns? Not even joking. Yeah, now these two dudes just don't do anything, just sit there, defending. Sophisticated, rude, but immature tomboy. Really good. Yeah, like the, the. Okay, so these dudes are like super bulls. I guess I should scan them. Uh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, They're gonna defend each other with support defend level 4! Oh, fuck off! Oh, 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 oh. Alright, I'll try and mercy one down and then map attack him with the quarter, I guess. Yes, destroy all enemies, so. Uh, like, this guy could do the self support thing, but that's not really neither. At least, like, this support defense is they're doing it for a puzzle instead of just giving it to loads of enemies that might, if you're lucky or unlucky, touch each other or not. <laughs> What's so funny? We will get you next time, Mars. We are immortal thanks to the power of darkness. And he blows up, and it's like, damn, what's up with that dude? I don't know, he hates fucking music. Here comes the big boy. Full of missiles. Look at him! So many. Power dunk is like power fringe of Yeah, pretty much. But. Remember. That much like friendship, darkness is not always bad. <laughs> Most uncool. Micro Frontier worth watching? I think so. I I liked it. Osmer is cool. He's a he's a wild dude. I like uh, I like Micro Frontier. Um, I also like the like alternate take movies as well. Ex like except like. One of the alternate take movies has an ending that is just set up so massively to, like, placate fans who didn't like how the love triangle worked. 
and it's just like so fucking forced and ridiculous that I give him some respect for it as much as I hate it. Microsoft Turtles has the advantage of only being like 20 something episodes. Or 30 something. I don't think it's the full 52. Like, like, throughout the whole thing, the love triangle is like, it's really obvious how it goes. Alto is in love with Cheryl. Cheryl is in love with Alto. Ranka thinks she's in love with Alto, but just mostly wants someone to look after her. And Alto doesn't love Ranka, but he also doesn't want to completely crush her by going, nah, I ain't into your kid. And like, that's how the whole thing is. He, he loves Ranka, but he's not in love with Ranka, if you get me. And like, that's the, and like, the whole thing, like, that's how it is. But fucking nerds are like, he should speak to Ranka. I want him to pick Ranka. So then they did a movie thing where they set up such a ridiculous thing for Ranka to be able to go, maybe, to go, he loves me, and it's like, that's not what was going to happen. But, they did it all the same. This dude have hit in a way, yeah, yeah, good, he does have hit in a way, I thought he did. Told he missile this fucker. Fucking gone. Was V any good? V's really good. V's really good. If you don't want to buy it, just watch all of my show on YouTube. Or hit all fucking 120 hours. But, like Taisu says, if you have to commit yourself to buy something, you probably shouldn't. Oh, if it's either V or Moon Dwellers, um, unless you are really into the OG, I would say get V. Like, V's really good, and their translation is excellent. And Moon Dwellers is really good mechanically, but the translation isn't brilliant. It's very mechanical, and also um, it's not as good in my opinion. Which is saying something, because uh, I still think Second OGs is the best Super Robot Wars game, just in terms of everything. But V comes pretty close. Yeah, Super's tomorrow. Doing all that nonsense. Gonna have the Tetsujin, gonna have the Mazingat, gonna have all them jokesters. V has the mic game editing just for that, it's good, but also all the other reasons, it's really good. Is most excellent. Like I think Second OG is still the best one. Like the the story's crazy good, all the characters are really good, the animations are really good, the music's are really good. Like the mechanics are really good, and I love them all. Like all of them. 
<laughs> you right, serious? Of course I am, fool. Poor serious. Um, whereas V is really good. It's really, really good. And it goes like super in on crossover stuff. Like there's lots of stuff where it's like this character is also this thing from this other series. It's like, what the fuck? But. Uh, second OGs, you can still equip individual stuff to people. But you don't have to upgrade weapons individually, so they're kind of worthless unless you really need something to fill a hole. Um, like, um, all Tyson needs, like, a long range weapon for countering. And stuff like that. But everybody's covered as they are, generally. Like, everyone's pretty good, and because you upgrade all of the inbuilt weapons, like, um, all together, then it's like, oh, I can either spend 150k upgrading this one weapon, or I can spend 150k upgrading every single weapon you've got. So unless it's a, like a really a niche you need filled on something, like all Tyson needs a counter weapon of greater than range three. Uh, and you use it to fill like all attack gaps for because some units don't have all attacks, but you, you use about five in the whole game. Like unless you really want to, you only use like five. If second OGs let you buy ability parts like Moon Dwellers and Dark Prison does. Um, then I think it would be like mechanically by far like absolutely the best instead of just probably the best. I also like the way it does the, the carryover where it adds up everybody's PP and then splits it between everybody. So instead of having one dude who gets 40,000 points and then next time they've still got 40,000 everybody else sucks, everybody gets like the 40,000 split up so even your shit dudes who are in the back and suck get to have a good time. So you're like, oh I didn't use this dude last time but maybe I'll use him this time because now they're pretty strong. I have not done OG1 and OG2 yet. I'm waiting for Sizer Kose. I'm going to use him to defend that man. To do the um... Uh, to finish his LP. He's done OG's 1. Like, the, the, like he's done the PS2 version. He did 1. And he got halfway through too before life got in the way, he's had to stop. But when he's done that and Gaiden he said he was going to do, uh, then I'll do it because he also goes over the differences between like what's in the PS2 remake and the original. Yeah, like, and if Moon Dwellers also, uh, not Moon Dwellers, if Second OGs was also in English, then... Oh boy! But there is the full English translation, you just... Unfortunately, do have to, you know, read it on another screen, which is the best. Hey, how you doing, you big piece of shit? You got fucking Wu Fei got beaten up. Yeah, the remakes do still have you upgrading weapons individually. Like, like the PS2 remakes are exactly the same as the originals, but with some extra shit and uh, team moves, like pairs, but mechanically they're the same, so it's like individual weapon upgraded. Okay, okay, I've got to get both of these dudes with the same attack, but support counts and um, map attack counts. So, like, that's the only way you can do it. So, I want to get some map attack. Double line? Yeah, alright. So, I want to get these jokers down there. Mercy. Let me fill my juice. Mm 
怪物相手にビビる俺じゃねえ命の力見せてやるLike, uh, OG1, I think, is a better game than OG2. But OG2 is, like, prettier to look at. And it's Dysengar in it. And Lamia, so. And, like, all of the Grungusts. And in the PS2 one, Mishu. Yeah, OG2 is rude with the, the SR points. I'm pretty sure that Apollo actually would have just fucking murdered both of those dudes, so. Like, straight up, he would have killed both of them if I hadn't mercyed, so the SR point was free because Aquarium's broken. OG1 does have the mustache, it does have Kai, but you gotta be cool to get him. Soul gain, yeah, OG1 does not have soul gain. Got him. But kind of soul gain, if only. Too much mustache. So, we did it. Space dudes down, space bugs down, bad space aliens down. Definitely look like they died this time for real. T exposure's too big. Uh, Marion worried about his subspace sensor being all weird. But, they'll talk about it on the quarter. I think I also like second OGs more because you can like swap people around and put like anybody in anything. And I've always liked that. As an aspect of the Super Robot Wars. Okay, so. Yeah, so what Marin saw in subspace should disturb them greatly. Even if it is just his imagination. Probably, because he didn't show up on sensors. But okay, before we can get back to the fleet, Mishima phones up and is like, yo, new job, you gotta go back to Earth, the Jokers. Uh, Jeffrey says, uh, yeah, Mishima reminds Jeffrey that the Frontier Government has the right to determine where the SMS goes, and uh, they've determined that the regular army can handle any threats to the Frontier, so you go into Earth, and Jeffrey's like, that's fucking crazy, dude. But, orders are orders. And uh, Utsuka probably has something uh, useful for the Valkyries to do. Uh, Jeffrey presumes that Mishima has gotten uh, the owner's permission for all this, so he's going to head uh, to Earth as the Frontier Fleet's representative. Second OG does still have some pilot mech restrictions, but pretty much everyone that was in OG1 and OG2 can swap around. So, that was pretty fishy. Uh, Kathy wishes uh, that she could guess what uh, mission was really up to, but... Um, it's like, aren't you fiancé? Why like, aren't you together? But she's like, I haven't even seen him in ages. And the uh, bridge bunny's like, oh, maybe he feels got feelings for us, again. Oh. And uh, Bobby might have a thing or two to say about it if she does. 
But in any event, yeah, like I was like those two very right again. It's like no, it's okay. But anyway, we gotta go, and it's gonna be piss. So, God Sigma crew talking to the Bullios crew, and they're like something like forcibly dragged us out of subspace into this world. So it's a bit weird. Uh, the other Crushers are uh, glad that they're all alright though, and uh, they're like, "Don't worry." Oh, you hang out near Earth, we'll handle the rest of the space-time. Don't worry about it. And then, Oz was gonna come in? There he is, there's a handsome man. So, uh, Ozma comes in and tells him that we're all going back to Earth. And uh, he says that he himself will be staying behind on the Frontier Fleet to run a little errand. I'm like, ooh, maybe something to do with Ranker, maybe? Ooh. But while he's gone, Alto's gonna be in charge of Skull Squad. Uh, Luca wants to, um... Yeah, Alto thought he was gonna give him shit, but he's like, no, you're in charge, dude. Uh, Luca wants to stay behind as well, um, to research what the deal is with the Vajra, which, uh, means it's only two planes on this one, Michelle and Alto. So, <laughs> so Michelle's like, wow, Alto, you're in charge of just the two of us. Nice work. Excellent. Great. But, um... Uh, Osme uh, gives Alto the Tornado Pack to improve his combat abilities in uh, the Earth atmosphere. And Esther just hopes that she can run into Crow now that the battlefield is shifting back to Earth. Yeah, the fucking Latuni Death Train that yeah, I love in OG1 and 2 just. Fire one with CD! Wow, 28 pilots, we did it! <laughs> 